Peru, the country best known for its adorable living piñatas. Like most of the world, the South American nation has been in lockdown for coronavirus. But this week, it reopened its biggest attraction for one lucky guy. Patience has paid off for a Japanese tourist who refused to let the pandemic ruin his trip of a lifetime. Jesse Katamaya wanted to end his journey around the world at Machu Picchu, the ancient mountain citadel in Peru. But he arrived in March. That was just as the country's COVID lockdown started. So Jesse did something cool. He rented a room. He studied yoga. He taught boxing to local kids and just waited. Word got around, and on Sunday, Jesse was granted special access to Machu Picchu as the only visitor in seven months to be there before he headed home to Japan. Whether or not you care about Machu Picchu, this story is inspiring. Because this guy had a goal during COVID, and he waited long enough to make it happen. We can all learn a lesson from that. Whether it's visiting a 15th century Incan fortress, or finally taking a shower today. You don't give up on your dreams, people. And I really admire this guy's patience. Cause after two days of waiting, I would have just paid some guy to Photoshop me onto Machu Picchu. See, looks natural as hell, and I'm ready to put it on my dating profile. Hey. But this story really has inspired me, you know? Like, I really think the world would be a better place if we all learned to be a little more patient. Like, we're always in a rush. We always want to get somewhere. Always... This person was like, I'm going to wait and just take a moment. Which is why, before we move on to our next story, I would like us to just sit together quietly with our own thoughts for just a minute. Get a clock up here and we can, we can just chill. All right, you get the point. Let's move on. Because the clock's going to go to zero and then we end. You, get, you understand what's going on. Let's move. Let's move. Because adventure travel isn't everyone's idea of a good vacation, Sometimes you just want to unwind. You just want to de-stress a little. And if you can't make it to the beach, well, why not head out to the barn? Well, people aren't getting in the hugs they used to before the pandemic. So if you need a hug, there's this. There is a Dutch practice called cow hugging, where people literally hug cows for hours. The BBC says the cow's warmer body temperature, slower heartbeat, and mammoth size can make hugging an incredibly soothing experience. And during the pandemic, cow hugging has apparently become a lot more popular. Cow hugging? What a wonderful idea for humans. And I'm sure the cows appreciate this too. I mean, for centuries, we've just been milking them. It's about time we added some foreplay. It's also great because anyone can do it. You can just go to a farm and hug a cow. And if a regular cow isn't available, well, you can always hug your mama. <laughs> no, but jokes aside, don't, don't hug your mom. It's a, it's a COVID risk. Seriously though, cow hugging does sound pretty sweet, but you have to be careful though, because you don't want to be in a McDonald's in a few years from now going, don't look now, but my ex is in that Big Mac. This is so awkward. Oh my God. Also, do you think about how confusing this is from the cow's perspective, right? One day, humans are coming over to kill you, and then the next day, we're coming over to hug? The cow must be like, look, man, either chop me up or put a ring on it, but enough with the mind games. But let's move on from cows to the cows of the sky, birds. Oh, you guys don't use that expression here? Anyway, here's one bird who just had a remarkable achievement. It is not news that birds migrate, of course, but this journey of this one bird is simply astonishing and has set a new record for nonstop flight. A bar-tailed godwit was tracked as it migrated from Alaska to New Zealand. And here's the deal. It flew up to 88 kilometers an hour, traveled over 12,000 kilometers in just 11 days. That's without stopping to eat, drink, or sleep. It beats the 2007 record when a godwit flew over 11,500 kilometers in nine days. Godwits, on average, weigh less than a pound, and scientists still don't fully understand how they navigate over the open water of the Pacific Ocean. That is so cool. It is amazing that such a little bird could achieve so much, especially since big birds ain't achieving shit. I mean, this dude's been hanging out on the same street for the last 50 years. Get a job. It's also crazy that scientists say they don't know how these birds are navigating these long distances. Because, guys, it's so obvious. I mean, before the bird leaves home, it Googles directions and then just remembers them. Jeez, scientists are so dumb sometimes. 
I will say this though, flying 12,000 kilometers with no food or water is really impressive. Although Spirit Airlines was like, yo, we've been doing that shit for years. Spirit Airlines, we're basically one step above migration. Moving on to the Nobel Prize, the award given to people who do smart brain thingies. The Nobel Prize is one of the highest honors a person can get. But if you think you're in the running, make sure you don't turn off your phone on award day. Sometimes good news simply can't wait. A Stanford University academic racing across the street at 2 a.m. to wake up his colleague and deliver this life-changing message through a doorbell camera. Paul? Uh -huh. it's, it's Bob Wilson. Yeah. You won the Nobel... Uh -huh. You've won the Nobel Prize. And so they're trying to reach you. Paul Milgram and Robert Wilson have taken out the Nobel Prize in economics for their work on auction theory. Oh, that was the most adorable paranormal activity sequel ever. Although, I feel bad for all the other nominees that this guy woke up that same night. Bing bong, bing bong, Richard, wake up! Richard, bing bong, you lost the Nobel Prize! Also, I'm stealing your Amazon packages, bye! Bing bong, bing bong! And by the way, going to sleep the night that you could win a Nobel Prize is one hell of a flex. I mean, that's the Nobel Prize equivalent of taking a shot in basketball and then turning your back on the hoop before the ball goes in. I bet this guy got in bed and said, Kobe, and then fell asleep. And finally, some good news for people who love soap operas. Even social distancing rules can't stop your stories from getting hot and steamy. We know the pandemic and social distancing. They aren't stopping the roma romance on the set of one CBS soap opera. Take a look. <laughs> that sounds like me laughing. Uh, that is a mannequin on the set of The Bold and Beautiful. Normally, actor Lauren St. Victor would be intimate with his love interest, Zoe, but Zoe was actually replaced by the mannequin. It's just one way the production is following <laughs> COVID safe rules. It is kind of funny, right? You see? You can make out with a mannequin. Take that, security guards at the Westfield Mall. Turns out I was just ahead of my time. But can I just say, on a personal level, I'm just so proud of that mannequin. I mean, last week, I saw her working at The Gap, and now, now she's on TV. That's what makes this country so great. If you're a mannequin who believes in hard work, you can end up as a soap star or even as a White House advisor. But what I love most about the story is that apparently not having a kiss in the show just wasn't an option for them. Yeah. I mean, they could have just written around the kiss, but the producers were like, yo, there are two million horny grandmas watching this show. He's taking his shirt off and kissing something. <laughs> 